Hello, and welcome to Dragon's Den, the show where budding entrepreneurs pitch their ideas to a panel of multi-million pound investors. First in the den today is Thomas Payne, a corset maker turned writer and bridge builder. He is looking for an investment in his new book. But what will the dragons think of his idea? His Royal Highness, King George III of Great Britain, Ireland and France. By grace of God, defender of the faith. He has made his fortune as a successful landowner and is now looking to invest in new and exciting projects to keep his mind off all those trees he talks to. Pope Pius VI. He has run a successful business in the Vatican City for a number of years now, but he insists that he made his fortune through the will of God. But what will Payne make of this? Edmund Burke. Don't be fooled by the name. He is a member of parliament representing Bristol, a political philosopher and one of the leading thinkers of the time. He is not a fan of pain, so this may get ugly. Deborah Meaden made her millions in the hospitality industry. One wonders whether she's going to be hospitable to Payne and his ideas. Good evening, dragons. My name's Thomas Paine, and I am known for my political writings. Common sense. The rights of man. And the age of reason. I'm here today, dragons, to ask for 20,000 guineas for my latest venture, which is an anthology of all of my political writings. In regards to this disgraceful pamphlet, Common Sense, you describe one's government as evil. As you do so desire, one advocates a welfare state. Yet, how could such a thing be implemented without rule and regulation? The solution really is quite simple. We'll set up local councils to help distribute the money. Mr Payne, you admire the new world, do you not? Allow me to say that America would be nothing without its founding fathers in Britain. Without, America would simply not be the civilised state that it is today. Let me say this. M Mr Payne, you give the greatest insult to our realm. You insist that America pays a tax to your parliament, yet they have no representation. The land of liberty owes Britain a great of datitude, does it well, not? On the subject of the noble monarchy as well, this is one of yours. Has it ever inflicted any harm upon its citizens? What good has the monarchy ever done for the people of Britain? As far as I'm concerned, it represents the divisions within our society. Then I would ask you, Mr Payne, how dare you demand money from one's royal personage for this preposterous work? One is out. Haha, <laughs> there's the king showing his dominance and authority in that conversation. How will the Pope challenge Payne's ideas? If his holiness could interject. Formio Vanicalla scorrerà a Zavit. His holiness has noted that in your book, Age of Reason, you talk about the Bible. What are your thoughts on the Bible and Christianity? The Bible is not the word of God. It was written by men to control other men. There is still some debate as to whether or not the Bible we have today is the same as it was hundreds of years ago. We die in all so you're an atheist. Ho oh, ho, oh, well, the Pope certainly wasn't impressed by that. There are churches across the world, and each of those churches accuse the others of disbelief. For my own part, I disbelieve them all. And for your information, I'm a deist. In palestra are en multi key escabants. 
So what do you believe in, Mr Payne? I believe in one God and the equality of man. I believe that religious duties consist of doing justice, loving mercy and endeavouring to make our fellow creatures happy. My own mind is my own church. All other national institutions of churches are set up by men to terrorise other men and to monopolise power and profit. The pipe is out. Well, the language barrier didn't stop that from becoming heated. 